Okay, I guess we can start. All right. All right. Well, again, thanks for coming to my workshop. Again, my name is Pino Trogu. I uh, teach in the School of Design. And this is the first time I do one of these workshops. So let's see what happens. Um, and um, OK, so let's start. Um, you all actually have a little booklet, a little pamphlet that I made for my students some years ago. Uh, because uh, I just wanted to make sure some things that they did were right <laughs> and not wrong. So it's a little bit um, dogmatic, but we'll see. Um, and so some of these rules are in the booklet, and there's also links to how to get uh, you know, another copy if you want. There's also a version online. Uh, so the first thing I tell them is get some paper and get some pencil. And actually, I forgot to email you to say bring some paper, because we might need to do some sketching. Um, in other words, to solve problems, it's just really hard to do it if you're just staring at the screen. And a pencil and a piece of paper is really a good place to start. So I tell my students, content is first. That is, you, um, you should really look at the data and see what it is, and then you know, try to decide what to do with it. Right? Um, so I tell them not to be stingy and give me more, not just one visualization, maybe it's tiny, small ones, but a lot of them. Um, sometimes students will draw bars by hand. Uh, I know this is very strange, but the people will do that. So the idea is, no, you don't want to do that. You want to process your data, get something, even though it's very raw, and then you can always fix it in Illustrator or in some other um, uh, you know, nice design program. If you're a programmer, you can do that writing code, but that's a lot of work. Um, I tell them, don't fill the space. You know, if you're making an infographic, don't fill the space with just big percentage numbers that said, you know, 20% of the people said this and 40% said that. Um, it's a little bit of a, uh, an excuse not to do actual visualizations. Um, this is very important, using words and not just images. It's what um, Amanda Cox at the New York Times, she's a graphics editor calls the uh, annotation layer. And that is that you can actually, in this example, which is a, a fancy scatter plot where the data points are actually years, and the years appear to go backwards because it has to do with um, how much people drove over the years. This is about traffic deaths and how it's been going down and down and down, except recently there's actually been a slight increase. And can you guys guess why there is an increase in uh, traffic fatalities? It has to do with something we have in our pockets all the time, I think. Um, so uh, anyway, she calls this the annotation layer. And what it means is that you can have a graph that's actually fairly complex, but you can fill it in with, in this case, beautiful captions that explain little bits what happened in those years to, tra you know, to, to traffic fatalities. Um, uh, this is a, re a recreation that I made of that graph, um, and it's actually in I learned somewhere. I'll, I'll show you. Um, small multiples. Uh, you might have heard of a guy not called Edward Tufty. I know one person here went to his workshop, sounded like, right? And uh, he's like the guru of data visualization. This is his first book, which is called uh, Visual Display of Quantitative Information. I think it's still the best. He's made four. And if you get a chance, you have some money, go to his workshops. Although, don't go twice, because it'll say exactly the same things. Three years later, I made that mistake. Uh, but it's fantastic. Uh, small multiples just means structuring your data so that you can have tons of little bar charts, tons of little line, char uh, line graphs, tons of little scatter plots, as opposed to just one big thing. Um, this is a good example, actually, from one of my students where um, she did a, a poster on um, housing in San Francisco, of course, right? And so it's essentially just a bar graph, except each, each bar chart goes down vertically, and each bar has a little caption, not all of them. And so, you know, this is the median gross rent. Okay, this is rents on the side, and this is the population, which pretty much has stayed the same. Um, so this is essentially a matrix of bars or you could call it seven bar charts vertical. Some people call bars columns and columns bars. I don't know what the difference is. But um, so this is a nice example of, in a way, small multiples and kind of arranged in a, in a sort of a matrix fashion. By the way, some of these principles, like this one, apply to design in general um, and re refers to text. So I tell my students, 
just maybe like speak out loud what you're saying because sometimes students don't realize this is a poster for a portfolio review when alumni come and, and look at our students' portfolios. And they did this poster and they thought it was cool, right? And I'm, I'm trying to understand. So, okay, I see a crime scene tape. So you're saying something about crime scenes, and but there is no crime scene of the portfolio review, which happens in Jake Allen's Hall. So even though you might not mean something, it might come out that way. So just make sure it's not the thing you don't want to say. Okay. So one one way to do that is actually literally like read out loud images and text, um, and then some other suggestions about. Uh, not to mess up with the typography too much. So if you do, for example, bold, condensed, letter spaced, you should never letter space words, you get this strange, like very weird uh, checkerboard effect. Um, this one is one that I've been pushing for years, and recently I was actually able to publish an article on it. So there's a link to the article, and this is the journal that has the article. Um, and it's about don't fragment the data into, in this case, little dots or little men because our brain doesn't work that way. Our brain likes to actually assemble things. Uh, this fellow named George Miller wrote a paper called The Magical Number 7 Plus or Minus 2 and basically figured out that there is a limit how much you can take in uh, visually um, and not just visually. And so he came up with this concept of chunking. Well, he didn't come up with it. He figured out that's what we do. We chunk things. So for example, phone numbers, we chunk them into uh, three digits, two digits, four digits. Um, and so the idea is that why do we want to do this on the right, four dots and eight dots, to say one third, when one third is also very culturally already accepted and sort of in ingrained in our memory? Um, so I'm against little dots and little men. <laughs> and, um, and this is actually an illustration, two illustrations from the article that basically shows that if you have a quantity, okay, so how do we show quantities? We can have lines, but most of the time we have areas. And so but numbers are usually monodimensional. They're like, you know, what's dollars? How big are dollars? It's just a number, right? So what the programs do is they take that number and factorize it. So if you have the number 125, you might make a shape that's 5 by 25. If you have 75, it might be a shape that's 5 by 15, OK? Um, a lot of programs do this. And here I just show basically you can simplify that into two bars. One is 3 and one is 5. And here I just showed that pretty much if you use little dots and little numbers, pretty soon you get you know, other controls. So here you have 25 items for four items. And when you have a few, it's OK. You know, maybe three or four, it's OK. But when it gets to be a lot more, things get a little bit, um, yeah, hard. Uh, it's, we have this thing called working memory that doesn't allow us. We have to move on pretty quickly, and there is no time to, um, to deal with all these little bits. Uh, do not use colors if you're trying to sort data. In other words, don't use, do not use hues to sort data because colors don't have um, an intrinsic natural order. Like if I ask you, what comes first, green or blue or red, <laughs> right? And so what happens is, well, it depends. If I start on the left, it's, you know, green is second. If I start on the right, green is, well, I guess it's also second. But anyway, um, the main point being that don't color code floors in a building, for example, OK? Instead, what you could do, you could just use one color or two colors and use gradations of the same color. So values are ordered you know, from light to dark. You could say 1 is white and 10 is black, or vice versa. Um, and you must have seen this example, actually. It's on the walls right now and in the, under glass. In the, it's an advertisement from the academic research. Uh, center, and it's it's not a great one because it uses a lot of colors. The data is not even sorted by by amount, so it's a little bit strange. It's not alphabetical. It's not um, it's not by how much. And one thing you can do often is you can omit the legend. So if you look here, this is what Excel will do. We'll just spit out a legend. And now we have to go, OK, which one is this? I have to go with all the colors. And there is no way I'm going to remember all these colors. 
So you can omit the legend. And this is debatable. What I tried to do here, with, I, I said, OK, let me just make a bar. By the way, a pi is a stacked bar in polar coordinates. This is something that um, Leland, I think his name was, uh, said, which is basically, imagine if you were to stretch this bar into a strip uh, and the center becomes the other side, you get a stacked bar. So I tried to do several things. I, I sorted it, and I put it into a bar with the colors, and it's still a little complicated. Then I tried to um, just use one shade, and then I just made some bars, OK? I said, oh, all right. Some people will say, well, that's not as fun as, as the, as the, you know, as the pie. This is a bullseye, right? So there's a debate about this. Like you catch somebody's attention with the bullseye, but then this question is, can you sustain that attention? Do I, am I gonna really read that now after I get, you know, close? Um, and then I love text. I think text, well, in this case, numbers is the basis of everything. Digits. But text in design is really the main thing. It's like a movie. You have to make a script before you can have a movie, right? So I said, why don't we just change the title and say, top 10 topics we love advising students about. Uh, and it turns out there were 10 topics in that list, and the 11th one was other. So um, yeah, sometimes words are actually better than images. OK, this is pretty straightforward. Uh, sort by value, not category. This looks like more fun. But this is really much more useful, because you can immediately see what's the high, what's the low, maybe what's in the middle. So that's really pretty important. Um, and this is one example. We're going to look at it later. It's about um, uh, uh, breast cancer mortality in the United States. And this is by state uh, mortality per 100,000 female population in 2012 and 2016. So if you sort the data, you immediately see that Mississippi has the highest rate of mortality, oops, um, and Massachusetts has the lowest. But if you leave it alphabetical, yeah, you could go through it. By the way, these are only 34 shown because I had deleted some data because, well, no, I didn't have data for some states, so I just left it out. Um, this is about timelines. If you're making a timeline and you make eight bullets, don't space them at the same distance and then write years. There are all over the place, right? You got to leave the physical space from one step to the next. And then if there is nothing in that space, well, that means nothing happened. Uh, uh, this is another one that I'm trying to write an article about, because these are very popular concept maps. And um, concept maps are this idea that if you visualize some concept, some construct, some theory, Visually, it becomes more accessible. Uh, not so. I don't think so. <laughs> um, and what they do is they take out the, all the little pieces of discourse, and they just leave the names for the notes and maybe the verbs for the lines. And the idea is that you can make connections, you know, a, little, a kind of hypertext. Um, but the trouble is that we don't think like that. Our, our thinking and our brain and our perception is very, very, very linear, actually, you know, temporally, too. So if I have to try to, so reading a book is great because everything is fixed and it moves in one direction. Um, our brains make connections all the time anyway. Um, and so what happens with these concept maps is that you're left with a lot of choices. You have to choose, OK, which way do I go? And it's like, and this definition is actually by a, a literary critic who uh, picked up on this distinction by an important linguist, Ferdinand de Saussure, who made the distinction between lang and parole. So lang is the language, all the possible instances that you can have, that you can use the language. And parole is like parlance, actual uses of the language. Um, so this other uh, literary critic named Edie Hirsch said, you know, it's kind of like uh, a dictionary. So your language is the words in, in uh, bold face. And for all, your parlance is all the definitions, right? So in other words, you can have one, but you have to put it into some kind of actual use, OK? Utterances, they call it. And so a concept map, in my mind, is all language and no parlance. You have to like imagine one of these big dictionaries. You take all the definitions out. 
and what's left, just the words. And then what are you going to do with those? It's kind of like magnetic poetry before you actually can make poetry with it. <laughs> it's really hard, right? I mean, think about it. You have to, make, you have to do all the work. I don't want to do all the work. I want to just tell me what you want to say. Uh, anyway, I spend a lot of time on that one, but it's, uh, it's one of my... Um, uh, using small type is OK in posters. Do not screen type, because since we only use black and white most of the time, black is going to turn into the, something like this. And when it's really small, it looks really crappy. Um, and at the end here, I just have a few links to also my last article about the little dots and little men, um, and two others about uh, cultural conventions. I mean, you. You can say all you want about making something visual, but you don't, if you don't have some background information about what maybe the topic is about, and also a little training, perhaps, on what a graph is supposed to mean, there's no way that you're going to make any sense of it, right? So it's really important to give a little bit of a lot of scaffolding and, and, and don't assume that, you know, oh, it's visual. It's going to be more easier than the text. Well, I don't think so, or more visual, more, you know, better than a table. Uh, OK. So uh, I think we're doing good with time. So these are some examples. Um, and at first, they look a little forbe uh, for, foreboding, forbidding. Um, this is actually on the cover of Tafti's book. It's a, a train schedule, a graphical train schedule going from Paris to Lyon um, from 1885. And so each line is basically a train. And each horizontal line is basically a station. And the distances here on the y are the distances proportionally between the stations, I guess, in kilometers. And this shows a train that leaves at 11 AM and arrives at 10 PM. So it's nine hours. This was in 1885. Uh, cool things about this are that where the train stops at the station for a certain amount of time, the line is flat. And also, where two lines cross, it's actually the same train coming, well, maybe not the same train, but another train coming in the other direction and actually literally crossing each other on the tracks, you know, on the two tracks. So it's pretty, pretty cool. But the thing to get out of this graph is that the steeper the slope, the faster the train. So this is a Tejave train, this is a high speed train now that takes about three hours. Um, if we flip that upside down, I mean sideways, um, oops, sorry. Um, it's basically a line graph between point A and point B, which is actually a great way to show data if you just remove everything in between. If you have certain years, it's nice to have a straight line because you can tell immediately what it did the next time period. So on the right is a, um, uh, this is actually the year that the Giants, one of the years the Giants won the World Series. Their average improved from 500 something to 580 and actually they did not have the highest average that year, but then they went on to win the World Series. So this just tells you that the Giants did better from 2011 to 2012, uh, and Boston did terrible. <laughs> In fact, they were last. Uh, so this is kind of similar, except here, more time doesn't mean better because it takes more time. But anyway, it's the same idea. So the slope of the line is very uh, visually tells you what's going on. Some things went down, some went up. Uh, this is a very famous, I think, um, line graph by a Frenchman who plotted Napoleon's march to Moscow and its retreat. And it started out with, oh, sh my mouse is going wild, sorry. Um, it, it plotted out the march and it started with 400, um, let's see, sorry, 400 men, I have to be careful with this mouse. Right here, 400,000, I think it was the beginning. So the line is very thick. And they got to Moscow, and then they, there was a siege of Moscow, and then they couldn't win, and they had to come back. And the line gets thinner and thinner and thinner. And um, there's a lot of, there's like seven different variables in this graph, which is amazing. But then after I looked at it a while, I said, you know, it's a line, but it's really, 
It's really a bar graph. I mean, think about it. This could be a month. I don't know now. I, I didn't do the calculation. But if you think about it, a bar graph that gets thinner, a bar chart where the bars get shorter and shorter, it's pretty much the same thing. The difference here is that the bars are centered with each other, right? Except here they're not. Um, so that's a great. And this is actually the very first bar chart invented by Playfair in uh, 1786. It always amazes me that one day you have no bar chart, and then the next day, boom, there is a bar chart. <laughs> it's a great thing, right? It's like, wow, from now on we can use bar charts. Um, this is actually a bar chart that I was a, 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 in a team that did this, and this is a beautiful animation. I wish I could have programmed this myself, but um, it shows um, the website Mendeley that has um, papers by biologists, I think. And this was actually for a competition. We won a little prize. And it shows this is all the, um, uh, the users of that website. And of those users who, has, who had, this is actually now almost 10 years ago, who had a LinkedIn website, like how plugged in were these biologists into like, you know, the social media thing. And let me see if I can play the, um, and by the way, this is done in a thing called D3. So if you're good at pro programming, there's a thing called data-driven documents um, by Mike Bostock. All the links are here. It's, a, it's just a JavaScript uh, library. And it's great because it works on the browser you know, from the get-go, so you don't need Flash or anything like that. Let me just see if I can play it. Yeah, so this is that. And it's pretty nice, because actually you can kind of chase it. So this is the animation. Basically, the programmer said, OK, I'm going to visualize a bar every you know, a tenth of a second or something. Um, and then it's nice, because it's, it's interactive. So it tells you who, the, who these people are, right? And you know, whether they had a, a LinkedIn connection. Um, OK. So let's see. <clears throat> This is another interesting graph. You don't see it as much, although I just found out that Excel actually has it in its charts. So I haven't, I just, up, well, I just installed Excel after 10 years of not upgrading. <laughs> 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 and of course, it's not that much better, but anyway. But anyway, it does have this new graph, um, which is called a tree map, which is essentially a pie with different slices, except it's square pie. And what's nice about it is it lets you see detail in a way that a thin slice in a, in a pie, in a regular pie, won't. But it's really best for buckets. So this is at the, at the worst point of the auto industry crisis. It's about 10 years ago. It shows for Chrysler uh, models of trucks, how many they sold. And for cars, how many they sold? And this is between like 2006 and 2007. And it shows um, if they sold more, it's green in 2007. And if they sold less, it's red. Uh, but the graph as a whole is really nice uh, because, because it shows, uh, in this case, just these four companies and shows the overall size and then the size of each model the size of which group, cars or trucks, et cetera. Um, OK. So I have to speed up a little bit. Um, a cool thing about coordinates, x and y, is that you can plot anything. And that took a while. Like, if you look at this map from the 1500s, east and west, north and south, oh, yeah, that's a great way to plot things, right, to plot cities. But it wasn't until, well, the cart really with this coordinate system that you know, we figured out, oh, why don't we just plot, um, you know, uh, presidential candidates and on the X we can plot how much they won, how much uh, percentage points they won in the popular vote and how much they won in the electoral vote. And here you see George W. Bluish, you know, he got less than the popular vote. And of course, Trump is probably going to be here somewhere, like way out. Um, Oh, I'm so sorry about this. This is like, OK, I'm getting better at it, though. Uh, OK. So yeah, so the scatter plot, Tafti really thinks, is the best, one of the best possible visualizations. This shows cigarette consumptions in the 50s in different countries. No, sorry, in the 30s, and then uh, deaths per million in 
1950, and the question is, why did Great Britain have such a terrible, you know, uh, lung cancer uh, compared, for example, to the United States? Can you, you guys figure it out? It's in the 50s, so I think it's bad pollution. In the, in the, all right, the last caterpillar I'm going to show is by Hans Rosling, uh, who is a Swedish fellow that actually died last year. He wrote this book, which is now a bestseller, still number one in Sweden, and it's still around in the US, uh, called Factfulness. He came up, his son and his uh, daughter-in-law came up with this beautiful visualization, which I'm going to try to go to. Um, so it plots uh, income, per capita income, on the X, and uh, life expectancy on the Y. And there's a slider, and you can so this is each country. The big bubbles are China and India. <clears throat> and this is where they were. So mortality, life expectancy was pretty low in, uh, yeah, in the 1800s, right? And then as you move forward, you will see that some countries, for example, China, pushes, 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 and overtakes a lot of countries. And so it's also interactive because you can it tells you where you are. So things have gotten better a lot better. So no country has life expectancy below 50 years old. These are a couple of countries, I think, in Africa. I can remember which. Uh, let's see. Uh, it's hard to pinpoint. OK. Anyway, uh, so that's a great place to And there are some other links here to see his talk. Um, he has like one of the best talks ever at uh, TED, TED Talks. Let's go. Okay, let's see. All right. So just some more examples. These, again, are bars for breast cancer incidence per 100 female population in 1115 and mortality for the same group in 1216. Um, you can't really tell much difference, right, because the scales are different. OK, so what can you do with that? Well, if you make a scatter plot, things get a little more interesting. And so what happens is you can take this kind of plot, I mean, this bar chart and this bar and get this one. So you can plot whatever this variable is, in this case, incidence on the um, x and mortality on y. And let's see what happens. And this is what happens. So if you were to. When you plot a scatter plot, you're really just plotting the data, right? You kind of tend not to show the zero point, right? Because if the data is, let's say, from 18 to 25, you know, mortality per 100,000, and if it is 110 to 140 for incidents, you know, you come up with this thing, right? But this is really what you're doing. So you're, you're projecting all these data points. And Anastasia, you have to tell me if this is right. Um, what's called the marginal frequency distribution. I don't know exactly what it means. I think it means like on the margins. <laughs> but uh, basically, all these tips of these bars, right, if we project them onto our y-axis, and if we do the same with um, all these tips, we project them onto the x-axis, that's how you get this kind of plot. And now if we zoom in on that, things get really interesting because there are 140 cases of cancer, breast cancer in Connecticut and Massachusetts, Minnesota, Rhode Island. And let's see. And there are the same cases in Maryland, but Maryland has 22 you know, mortality per 100,000. So that's pretty high compared to these states. So immediately you see that some states even though in this case, for example, has a much lower incidence, fewer cases, but higher mortality in Mississippi. We can, dis we can discuss why, right? There's probably reasons. Um, Nevada, terrible, right? I mean, the same, the lowest incidence, but pretty high mortality. Is uh, there control for when they were diagnosed? I don't know, but there is, a, there is, a, there is an article, so a lot of these uh, cancer things I got from an article about this uh, disparity actually about black and female. In this case, we're just looking at states. Um, so the article is there. You can, it's, yeah. it's in I learn. Yeah, I think, I think it does, it does, there's all kinds of uh, adjustments. Yeah. 
Uh, and this is just a cleaned up version of that last cut of plot. And just a couple of things I want to point out. Um, you know how we get the label for the y-axis? It's always at an angle. It's terrible, right? Because it's, you have to, you know, you have to like, okay, <laughs> what does that mean? So just make it straight because actually you don't have to put it here if you don't have room. You can just put it on top. Our eye just automatically, by default, well, if this is the label for the x, this has got to be the label for what? For the y. So just, just make it into like a little block and put it on top. Um, sometimes that's the title of the graph, but in this case, it's not. Um, and then here, I just highlighted a few, um, a few states, the, basically the highest, yes? So then if you're doing it with the block on the top, and you have a title for the graph, where would that be placed? Wherever there is room. I mean, you could put the title here, you know. It's just that sometimes, um, well, not in a scatter plot necessarily, but like in a bar chart, you always have just one thing. So the title becomes the title for the Y, right? Um, anyway, I just highlighted the, the um, yeah, basically the extremes between the two, okay? Uh, so again, now try to remember these numbers. So Mississippi has 23 and a half, let's say 23 um, deaths per 100,000 population. You'll see that if we have time to look at the black, white disparity, that number goes way up. It's like kind of crazy. Um, and that's it. So that was pretty good. That was half an hour. Um, so, Question? yes. What, so what applications did you use to create your graphs and all of those, uh, all the graphics? Yeah, so these ones, so this is cleaned up in Illustrator. Illustrator. Okay, so we all have Illustrator, and I don't know if you've ever used it, but basically Illustrator is, is the best if you're, if you're trying to do, you know, just really, really clean. Now, of course, again, if you're a programmer, either in R or D3 or whatever, and you know what you're doing, you can write code and make this magically appear, which is really what Illustrator does. You just don't see what Illustrator is doing for you, right? Um, but these were done in R. These were done in R, and I, you know, I assembled them in Illustrator. And R is really bare bones. And I don't know R. It's a really powerful package for like, you know, astrophysicists. But I use it because it has very few distractions that like some other programs do. But we'll. My students are like, oh, can we use Tableau? Because it's so easy, you drag and drop. If we have time today, we can see what are the advantages of that. But, um, but I would like, actually, yes, to, to start showing maybe how you can do some really basic things in R. Uh, and then you know, maybe Tableau, and then maybe clean up something in Illustrator. Um, so is that what you teach in your, in your I, I data design class? Yeah, I teach a class called uh, Information Design Data Visualization. But again, I'm not a programmer. I'm not you know, a statistician. So I come at it from design. And I just try to you know, play with stuff and see. You know, I mean, the students are so quick. And I just tell them, hey, you know, like, let's figure this out. But I, one hard thing that they find is actually they're not even used to like reading an article and, and looking at the source and actually trying to drill down and find that source and you know like I gave them New York Times articles and it says source you know and most of the time you can find that article find the data set and and so that's really really important um, do you guys have any other questions if not I'll, I'll jump to the are you doing okay all right it's a little fast but you can always go back okay and I'm actually amazingly if I'm taping it so if uh, if my computer doesn't get fried by because I'm trying to Record everything. I might have it online eventually. Um, the actual, the actual recording. Okay. So let's see. Uh, I might, I might keep this up here. Uh, so yeah, go ahead and download uh, the folder called. It's a, it's an archive. It's called uh, Tools. Uh, in the iLearn website, so you should all be in iLearn, in the in the Tada uh, Data Tada website. Um, and what I what I'll do is I'll go through some of I, I made a lot of I made three or four files and I annotated them all, most of them. So what I can try to do is maybe go through a couple of things fairly quickly, 
and then we can uh, maybe do something together, okay? So yeah, if you go to iLearn, it's, um, it's the folder called, um, yeah, under workshop file, files. Yeah, just download tools too, to your desktop, if you can, if it asks you, uh, so that you, you have access to it. And then when you, um, when you do that, just double click, it should, it should expand. And there's a lot of, Is it working? Okay. So yeah, while while we're doing while you're doing that, I'll I'll start since, like I said, I'm, I'm going to try to do a couple of things, and hopefully they'll work. <laughs> it's um, it's amazing things always always there's always something that you know one doesn't predict. But um, so so your folder should look something like uh, this. Okay. Okay, so it should look like that, and um, we can. I'm, I'm going to actually open uh, the R Studio folder. There is a breast cancer folder. There is the code, um, and there is uh, the data sets. And the data sets, I have one folder that's called text, and one folder is called Excel, but it's comma separated values, so actually this could be technically text too, but I just like to make sure I don't I don't get Excel files involved. I just use these text ones, okay. Um, so um, and if you like, you can you can open the same file I'm opening now, but again what I like to do is go through it a little fast now and then open one together and we can do a couple of things, okay? Um, so just um, well, let's open R. Let's let's just start by launching R, which is, by the way, I'm sorry, R Studio. So R Studio is uh, should be down there in your dock somewhere, um, in the definitely on these desktops. Uh, so, so R Studio is really just a skin over this other program, which is a little more like really old school. If you go to the R, R website, it's like they haven't updated it in. 20 years <laughs> visually, but um, it's great because it has a lot of uh, support and a lot of people write for it, so there's lots of packages. Um, so when you open R, it will look like, I mean, R Studio, so what happens is it, it launches R in the background, you don't see it, so don't worry about it, but you should have this. Um, so are you able to get to get this? No? Do you have R? It's here. Really? Yeah, it's yeah. Not dock, it's not on the dock. Oh, I'm sorry. So yeah, do search maybe and, and go to uh, go here and do um, yeah. Our studio is the name of the program. Found it. And depending on whether, I guess these are all Macs, so it'll probably look all like. Did you find it? My computer, my um, do a finder search. Isn't, isn't working. What? No, do a, do a search here. No, under spot, spotlight, yeah. Yeah, just look for R Studio, one word. R, 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 like the letter R Studio, yeah. Find it? Yeah, just say install, no, install, no, 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 not, not now. Yeah, that's it, you opened it. Oh, cool. No, you got it. You got it. It's open. Okay. Anyway, since you, you're not required to do anything yet, what, try to find it. But it should be there. Okay. Um, so um, again, we'll we'll try to do one bit together. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead. So here in R, there's four panes really. Um, so the first one is on the left here is the console. But if we open a file, so just say open file. Okay. So just say open file from the, and then just open the first, um, the first R code file. So let's see, where am I? Desktop. Mm -hmm. 
If you if you get stuck, just you can just look at the screen and then we can pick it up later when. Okay. So it's the one that's called R1. So just just click on it. Yeah. Okay. So the, it has a bunch of comments. So everything that's like. Um, and don't don't worry. Don't be afraid if you've never programmed. Again, I'm not a programmer. I just find stuff. If it works, I just adapt it, and it's like, okay, this is cool. But sometimes it doesn't work. Well, uh, so the, the stuff with the, all the pound signs, it just means it's not code. It's just a comment, okay? Um, so once you open that file, the first thing we need to do is to bring in the data set. And we do that on the environment pane right up there on the right side. So just say import data set from text and find uh, the data set, which is the, uh, under breast cancer again, under our studio, data sets, and then under text. And we're gonna, we're gonna get that one, this one, breast cancer, break can, okay? Are you guys okay? Yeah. All right. So I'm just going to import that. Now, when you import it, here's what happens. It kind of gives you a preview of what that thing might look like, okay? And you, gotta, you just have to watch for one little thing, okay? And that is that if you don't tell it, in this case, that there is a heading, that the columns have headings, it will put headings for you. In this case, V1, V2, V3. That's really bad. You don't want that because then the second line is going to be garbage, and we want the second line to be tight, to be numbers. So just make sure you say heading, okay? And then that looks better, right? That looks more human right now. And just to go through it, let me just show you what this file has. It has a lot of stuff. Um, it has a state, it has the mortality for the United States and incidents for the United States for these years. And then it has black mammograms, age 40 in 2014. It has black incidents, black mortality, white mammogram, white incidents, white mortality, uh, the ratio, lots of stuff, the population of the state, and then another little column that it's a, it's a little hack that I had to do to do a particular thing. So anyway, if you say, and this looks good, right? I mean, it just looks pretty good, pretty clean. So just say import. Um, so this also shows it to you here. Now, if we go back to the code, this is why I love R right here. Because actually, for me, this is the one reason to just install it if you have nothing else. <laughs> um, let me just show you. Uh, and here, you can, by the way, you can uh, you can just retype. You can say plot, and you open the parentheses, and it immediately closes the parentheses. And then you can um, you can tab, oops, and it will find stuff that's available. Um, no, it's not finding it. Never mind. Um, let me zoom out again. So if um, if I just type the name of the file between the parentheses, and then I run the code. So to run the code, you can either highlight it, but if you highlight it, you have to make sure you highlight the whole line. If not, just put the cursor in the line, okay? And then just say run right here, okay? Let's see what happens. If you run it, you get that, which is beautiful. <laughs> So this is great. So this is like all the possible bivariate scatter plots with all the possible combinations of all the columns. So essentially, it's plotting 13 columns by 13 columns and what happens. And now it's really hard to read because it's small, but you can uh, restrict uh, with what you want to see. So I'm going to tell it now to show me just column one through column five. If you remember the spreadsheet, right, with all the so if we do that, so you just type, um, just type the um, whatever you call that bracket, square bracket, and then you just say what what was it two five? Now I forgot. Um, and then run it. 
now it just shows less stuff, right? So now we can understand. It. And the way you're supposed to read this is that you, um, it's telling you if I, let's see, uh, incidence, mortality. Okay, let's do another. Yeah, for example, this one right here. The way you read it is this way. So these are all the labels. And this, if you move across and down, it will tell you that this graph is, uh, actually, let's take this one. This graph is basically the bar charts we looked at earlier. Um, so this is the incidence across the Y, and this is the mortality up and down, I'm sorry, across the X, and this is the mortality up and down the Y, okay? So anyway, this gives you a sense of like, oh, this lo all look interesting, right? I'm not sure exactly what they are, but they are something. Um, so let's just do a couple of other things. You can, you can run a summary. Um, just type the word summary and then between parentheses the name of the file and that will um, give you information about the data. So for example, for mortality, it will tell you for the states, the, high, the, minim, the minimum is 18, the highest 23.4, and for incidents, 109 and 140. So this is good to like get a sense of you know, what the data says. Um, okay. Uh, come on. Sometimes it gets stuck in there, okay. Um, so I'm just gonna go through some of this. Um, yeah, the way it works is that you can, um, you type the name of the file and then in parentheses you type the name of the file again, the dollar sign and then the name of the column, okay? And by default the first argument is X and um, in this case it's a bar so I actually just need one. And then if I run that, I get a bar chart. So I'm just going to go through these fairly quickly. Bars are not as interesting as scatter plots. Uh, now, they're not sorted, so this next line is going to sort it, and what it will do is it will create a new, a new file. You see it appeared here? So it's basically just, just sorting the data by, what was it? By incidence, okay? And then there's a little more fancy stuff, which I'm not just going to go putting the label there, also sorting it, and then adding the text. Um, so the way this worked was that we created a new, um, a new function actually to tell it exactly where to put these labels because if you know that here, there's no room to put all the labels, <laughs> right? There's like 50 states or 34, but there's no room. So we can put them at an angle or vertical and things get a little, a little better. So, yes? I'm just getting error when I try and do what you're doing. Did you just click on the lines? Mm -hmm. I clicked it and then I also tried highlighting it. Mm -hmm. mm, make sure you highlight the whole thing. The line is actually sometimes more than one line because it's, uh, it wraps. See that? So just make sure you highlight everything. Oh, you don't have the um, you don't have the data set yet. Oh. You have to import the data set from where? From the data set folder under the cancer. I'm sorry, I was trying to look for our studies here on my computer, but I don't have it. Like, installed. You got um, it. How can I log in here? With your ID and your um. Uh, it cannot be found. Yeah, because because you haven't imported that. No, I did. When Where? I tried to import it, this is what it says. Um, oh, no, 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 no. Go to the. Yeah, there you go. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Okay. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Make sure you say heading. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Import. I don't know, that's weird. Uh, try start over, I don't know. Just clear everything, yeah. That's, did you? Um, I'll just 
Yeah, yeah it's weird. It's, that's in your computer, right? Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I don't know why it's not. Um, but, but I would clear out everything. OK. Um, sorry, I'm just going to go, because we're almost, uh, well, I guess we're already working together. So we have actually quite a bit of time. But um, I wanted to show you some cool things before we officially work together. Um, so let's see. Uh, now I'm just going to do the same thing here with the mortality. It's not sorted, so now we're going to uh, just just to show what's happening is we're creating again a new sorted order, and then it has to go into this other line, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And if you have a file, uh, eventually what you need to do is just um, just just switch, you know, the name of your file. You know, put the name of your file there, put the name of your column there, and you should be good. Um, so uh, this is all care spending. Yeah. Okay. So now I'm going to quickly go through this. So this is now the healthcare spending and mortality. Oops. Oh, I need to import it. Sorry. I'm going to import also the other text file, which is the healthcare spending. Uh, so our, also in our studio, breast cancer data sets text, uh, just HC spend. And this is just, I just try, okay, let me compare healthcare spending and, you know, breast cancer mortality. So again, make sure you check heading um, because otherwise it's going to be a mess and import it. And now that we have it here, which is, sorry, it's this one. Um, and this is the very, very basic. So this is line 110. Um, this is really the very, very simple syntax. So again, I'm going to, actually, let me, let's look at that for a moment. Let's look at the file itself. So the, the actual spending is in this column. It's called spend in 2014. Okay, so that's how much each state spent per person on healthcare, 7,000, 8,000, 10,000, something like that. So that's what I'm gonna call uh, here. Okay, so the, I'm just gonna say the word plot and then in parentheses I'm gonna say the name of the file, the column spend and that's by default the X and then Oh, and this is actually interesting. You can call two separate columns from two separate files. So this is now calling the spending from this file about spending and the mortality from the file about cancer in general. And this is actually pretty cool. Like probably other programs can do it, but. Um, so when we run that, we get this. Yes? Does that mean that, like, so you would have imported both yeah, 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 right. Data sets, but then does that mean you had to have run the breast cancer one before? No, no, no. No, it's, it, you see, I just imported one after the other. As long as you have them here in your environment right here. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have the first file, which was breast cancer with a lot of stuff, and then the health spending, which was just this. As long as you have them there, it, I don't know how it works. It puts them in memory, something, you know. Um, but they have to be here, otherwise it won't, it won't work. So, um, yeah, so this is now, we don't know which state is which, but uh, let's see if we can. Uh, okay, this, this part, this particular thing here added the title and also added how long I want my, um, my X and Y to be. You can tell it, okay? Uh, let's just see, you can tell it exactly and then the states. And then when you put the states, of course, um, again, it gets pretty interesting because it's similar <laughs> to basically the incident. Well, I don't know if it's similar, but obviously, let's see, states that some states that spend a, a lot still are not so great. You know, they're not doing as well as some other states. Um, so the mortality for Delaware is pretty high considering they're almost the, the state that spends the most. Okay, all right, I'm going to, um, 
because I don't want to do the whole thing about R, but um, I'm just going to show you from um, I'll just do two more things in R, and then we'll have a lot other, yeah, 40 minutes to do the other things. So um, is uh, people getting, is it working, more or less? OK. I mean, it's very rough, but you can move these things later in Illustrator. There is a way to move the names off the, off the dots. Um, and you can export this, by the way, here. You can just say, save as PDF. Um, and we'll look at how, clean, how to clean that up. So I'm just going to. Save that as PDF. You have to tell it where. It's a little funny. It's like rubber. Depending on what size you tell it to be, it will actually make the plot that size. So um, I'm going to make mine a square, uh, maybe 8 by 8. And then, uh, yeah. And then directory, you have to specify where you want it to go. I'm just going to put mine on the desktop. And then just say test. Save. OK. And we'll look at it later when we, um, when we use um, Illustrator. OK. So I'm going to close this file now. Don't save it. Um, actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, let's see, I'm going to clean the plots. But I'm going to leave my data sets because, after all, I'm going to use them still. Um, all right, so now I'm going to open number two. How are you guys doing? OK? Yeah. We're going to get to the really fun stuff with Tableau, which is like magic, and you don't have to do anything. You just push buttons, and it just it's like a little bit um, very, very fun. So uh, OK, I'm going to open now the number, number two. Yeah. Uh, and I'm going to go to line. Um, we're going to plot, again, incidence and mortality. And it's line 261. Uh, so since I already have the data sets, I don't have to worry about that now, right? They should, it should work. So 261, um, some, somebody, actually my chair recently sent this email saying, we need to go to virtual reality. You know, it's like presumably for data visualization too, which presumably it means third dimension, right? So you're not in a flat space like, you know, X and Y. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, X and Y is already enough. I don't want Z. <laughs> so, um, but let me just show you how you can represent Z, which is a third variable. Um, so line, we said line 261, yeah. So this is going to be the same thing, OK? And by the way, I've, if, if you put a return in R, it doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. It will still read this as a whole line, OK? It just can become a little cleaner and easier to read. So again, it's going to be breast cancer, incidence on X, and uh, mortality on Y. OK. So let's, oops, let's run that. Um, see what happens. Yeah, it's, it's basically what we had before. Um, we're going to add a title, and we're going to add a title with this, uh, and also a subtitle. OK, so this is actually a little. So again, this is basically one big line. Uh, either select it all or just put the cursor there and just run it. And you got that. And now we put the name of the states. So just so you know, it's very like, it's like really nerdy stuff. But the, uh, this is the size of the type, CEX. I can't remember what it stands for. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to redo the same thing, but it's going to put text in these coordinates, right? And it's going to put the names of the state on top of those coordinates. Uh, so this is now pulling the information from the state column. 
So let's see what that happens. Okay, round. Yeah. Um, and now the one thing. Oh, you can also put. Um, you can also put some grid lines, and these are just cut and paste. You know, in Google, I went, how do you put grid lines on R? I just found something, and I just, that's nice. So you can actually do a lot if you, if you have the time and you know how to do it. Um, but let's see how you can actually put, um, how you can make the, um, let's see. Hold on. We're going to jump. We're going to now draw circles, but I'm thinking I might have gotten lost uh, because these are all the same. I want to see how the state's even smaller. Hold on. OK, actually, sorry, sorry. Let's just jump. So that's the same thing, but let's actually jump. I was, I was um, sorry. Let's jump to 379. Sorry, 358. <laughs> I feel like it's bingo. Uh, 358. Uh, we're going to do, uh, let's see if it runs, first of all. OK. All right. So here's what's happening. If you look at the, at the uh, data set oops, uh, in breast cancer, you'll see one of the last columns is population, right? OK. So. What we're telling here is to basically do the same thing again, but instead of just doing plot, we're going to do symbols. In this case, we're going to do circles. And so the third argument is that it's going to draw symbols and it's going to draw circles, but it's going to take the information from the population column. Okay? So breast cancer population. And what happens is it looks like a lot of fun, but it's wrong. <laughs> um, because actually, these circles are not proportional. But let's see, let's stick with it for a while. So let's add the name of the states. And here's what happens. Um, so California and New York are about, California is about twice as big as New York in terms of population. I forget what it is, but it's about twice as much. But can you see that it's actually much bigger, California, than twice the circle? So that's a mistake. And so what we need to do is we need to square the data because, um, yeah, because otherwise the proportions are like completely off because it's using the diameter to proportion them. So to do that, we jump to, um, 379 right here. And we're going to tell the circles, we're going to do, do the square root and then take the population. Then we're going to say uh, how big we want them. So this is now going to give us better proportions, and, um, and this is much better in terms. Now, this is showing the population. So what's the point of showing the population? Not much, really, right? So this looks cooler, but watch out, because now it's drawing attention to the population of the states, which is not really what you want to draw attention to. You want to draw attention to something else, right? I mean, the rate is already shown. So this could show maybe spending, perhaps? I don't know. But um, just, yeah, don't, don't be, um, uh, you know, just, just watch out for, like, not showing something that is, um, OK. Why don't, we do, uh, why don't we do one together now, OK? And that will maybe take uh, 10 minutes, and then we can do the remaining half hour with the other programs. How's everybody doing? I'm almost exhausted. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's see. I'm going to also sweep my plots. Um, and I'm going to close everything um, and save. Uh, yeah, just leave those. Uh, 
So the one we're going to do together, uh, so remember that number, the mortality by state, it was around 20, right? 20 something? Do you remember that? Per 100,000? It was 20 something? 23. 23, okay. Um, so yeah, now we're going to jump to code, uh, four. So again, under, yeah, so the data sets are already there. Just, just say open file. And we're going to open four. Actually, let me see, maybe five. I did one last minute thing before I came. Um, by the way, I recommend paper always, everyone. See how easy it is to find stuff? Much easier than if I have to look in my computer. I have no idea where it is there, but. Uh, yeah, of course I didn't print because it was last minute. So let me open, let's open both just to, uh, so let's open, can I open both? No. Okay, I'll just open four first. Um, it's just that I'd forgotten to do one thing. Um, oh yeah, I know, I just put a title. So this, this is not gonna have a title, but it's simpler and it's cleaner. So let's do this, um, let's type. Okay, we have 10 minutes, we'll just do typing, okay, for 10 minutes. Um, and, um, and after we type, we can erase the old lines so that you can, uh, so we can keep the uh, numbers, the line numbers in sync. Everybody has this open? Yeah, I can check, let's see. Make sure. <laughs> Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh Okay. So, yeah, oh, fine. <laughs> you made the circles too big? You know, I'm, I've... Uh, you, no. you lost me, right? Yeah, and, well, I know, I wasn't able to download the... Uh, oh, we'll do it here. It. That's what I'm going to try now. I yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. So were you able to open four? File four? Four and five? Four and five, yeah. The difference with five is that I just added the title so it's so that we know what we're looking at. Yep. All right. Okay. I don't know what happened there, but something must have happened. Okay. So um, yeah, so let's let's just uh, Let's just type. So here's how you type. Put the cursor underneath and just type plot, okay? And then parentheses, okay? So parentheses, you have to do shift, and it's the nine, okay? Right? And when you do that, automatically it opens the, it closes the parentheses, so you need to do something inside there. And now just type the name of the file. Now if I start typing bre, you see how it shows me my options? It already shows me that I can type break, which I have no idea what it means. But break count is my file, right? So that's nice. If you hit tab and then say and tab again, I guess. Sorry. Go to it and then hit tab again. It will just type it for you. Okay. So using tab is useful to, uh, you know, basically save time. And then run it. And you get this, which again is a lot. So now I'm just gonna delete my first line. So I get, come back to the beginning. And now uh, let's type again. Uh, okay, one, one minute. Let me just show you again the data set. So the data set again is a lot of stuff, but now we're gonna split we're gonna actually look at black and white separately, okay? So if you look at the data set, it's like this. So this just means, so this was states. This was the average for each state overall, but this is now gonna look at, for each state, the black female, and NH just means non-Hispanic black, uh, mammogram and incidence, okay? So it's slightly different years, but it's a similar five-year period. So the columns are the black incidents for 2010, 2014, and the mortality for 11 and 15, and then also the white um, incidents for the period 
2010-2014 and the white mortality for 11 and 15. Okay, so again, it's a slightly different uh, year range between the one we had before for the states, but it's basically the same idea. I mean, it's very close, so we can uh, we can assume it's. So just um, yeah, just just type it because then you get into the habit. <laughs> so just say plot parenthesis, and now I'm going to look for my file. There it is, and then dollar sign. Okay, and now look, it's giving me options, great. It's giving me all these options, and I know I want white incidence for the X, so white incidence is right there. And then simply comma. You don't have to put a space, but I like to put a space. Uh, and now I type again, breast, breast cancer file, um, dollar sign, Dollar sign again. Options. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna plot the mortality for white on the y. So mortality is white. White mortality. Where is it? Ah, here it is. Here we go. White. White mortality. Okay. So basically, I retyped the line above. It's just that that was split. Okay. So I'm gonna. Well, actually, let me make sure it works first before I erase that. So. Um, so I run that, and that's pretty good. OK. So that's now white incidence per state and white mortality per state. So now we're going to do the same for the black. OK, so I'm going to say plot again, parenthesis, rest, cancer, dollar sign, I got five minutes to finish this. Uh, and now we want black. So we want uh, non-Hispanic non black incidence first for the X. And then I want black on dollar sign. And now I want non-Hispanic Black mortality, non-Hispanic black mortality. Where are you? Right here. OK, so I just retyped that line. OK, so now let's run that. And here's what's interesting to me between the two, OK? We can, we can, I can just toggle. By the way, you can toggle between the graphs here in this little arrow. You can actually go back and forth um, with the plots that you just made. So this is white and this is black. Now it changes, right? Can you, do you see this? I mean, okay, it changes, but hmm, it changes somewhat. I mean, it doesn't look too crazy, right? Stuff is changing, but what is changing? So now let's, um, Okay, on this second line, I'm not going to retype this. It's too much. But now it just, we're just going to add the names, okay, to the same thing. So now I have, again, the white with the names. Now I have the black with the names. And again, you know, it's like, okay, I can start looking at the states, but, but here's where things get. What, what we don't realize is actually that the y-axis is changing quite a bit. It's just that it doesn't look obvious because it's all the same rectangle, right? But the number is changing dramatically. Look at it. It's going from 24 to 34. That's a big change, except visually it doesn't look like it, right? So let's see how we can make that look. Yeah, you don't have to retype this, but you can play with it. So what we do now is we just add, we make the frame the same for both graphs. We take the maximum and the minimum from both, and we include everything with those extremes. Okay, so here I just added, I made the um, the x and the y exactly, actually a little bit more, all the way looking at both files, at both plots, so that I can include uh, the maximum in any of the two and the minimum in any of the two. And so if we run that now for the white. We get this. And if we run the same for the black, 
Now, that is different, right? There's a big jump, so you, you can't see much is changing because it's just here, the, more t the, the white. So that's white, and that's black, and that's a lot because look at Oklahoma, it's like 33 cases per 100. So that's a really big difference. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's, that's where, so these two plots side by side could tell a story, right? I mean, you don't even have to look at individual states. I mean, except perhaps Connecticut and Massachusetts. But if you look at everything, just nothing else but the mortality, you can see that for blacks, it's much worse. It's like two to three. I think it's, uh, yeah, it's 50% higher. OK, so good. Um, so anyway, here's why I, why I like R is because it, there's no distractions. And we'll see now with the other files, especially Excel. It's like, oh my god. Um, anyway, if, you, if you're curious and you open uh, for, I mean, file, it just has some labels, so it's clear. It's um, file, open file. Yeah, if you open five, I just did this morning because I realized, oh, it's not. Yeah, if, if you do five and you run the same thing, um, there's just some labels, so it tells you what you're looking at. Okay. And again, nothing much changes except here, but there you go. Um, how are you guys doing? We have another half hour, but now you're going to have real fun because it's very colorful, the rest. <laughs> Art is very white. Um, do you have any questions? So there is, by the way, um, I think file number uh, two has a lot of comments, so it's like what I just was talking about. It's like all comments, so you can you can open that. Um, all right. Uh, so I think we can close this. Don't save. Any questions? Is R sensitive to a minimum data size? I don't think. Well, I don't know, but I'd probably not, because like I said, astrophysicists use it, and you know, biologists. So it's it's. It's really pretty, um, and you can do, I think, most of the stuff that these really co uh, fancy, you know, very expensive packages can do. I just don't know how to do it, because, I, I mean, you know, I just use it for, uh, for basic graphics. Um, okay, let me look at my notes so that we, we have a half an hour. Let's see what we can. Um, Let me just quickly show you how, in Illustrator, I cleaned up um, one of those plots. Uh, let's see, if I go to the F Illustrator folder, there's a clean, yeah. Uh, and I'll just, I'll, you don't have to do this, but I'll do it in Illustrator, and I'll just show you what, what it looked like when it, it um, like I said, the, the plot window in R, it's like a rubber sheet, depending on how you, it's a little weird, but um, so this is in Illustrator, and you just have to do, you know, a little bit of cleaning up. You can, for example, um, get rid of all the parts that maybe are not there. Now, see how the dots are underneath. Sometimes you can, you can see if you can select um, the same appearance. I don't know if you know Illustrator, but like uh, I got, okay, so I selected almost everything, but I really just wanted the names of the states. And I'm going to, um, uh, it's a little hard. Huh. Nope. I just wanted to move. Hold on, let's see. Select, same appearance. I just have to be a little more. And now I deselect the parts that I don't want to get rid of. There we go. Um, now I could make a group of those. Oh, can make a group, OK, because I needed to. Anyway, maybe I'll just move them a little bit. Never mind, this is not working, because I selected everything. Um, I have to ungroup everything. Select, same. Hmm. Fill color, about that. 
I just want to deselect the, uh, maybe I can just move everything and leave the dots where they are. Yeah, I do it, okay. So that's the kind of thing you might do. Again, you can write the code for it and also in other programs too, you can tell to move the, the labels off. Um, so anyway, after various steps like this, I came up with this. And you know, this is what you saw earlier, um, which is before actually I um, highlighted you know, some of the states. Again, I moved the label there and I just put a, a gray background underneath and I put white little uh, rulers. Sometimes it's true that scatter plots are like kind of, oh, I can I say, kind of boring looking. So maybe if you put a board, you know, a box underneath, it becomes a little more of a thing, which is why perhaps white people prefer bars because they're like physical. Um, okay, I'm not gonna save that. Don't save. So let's see. Um, maybe we should open Tableau. Studio Tableau. Oh, okay, let's open Excel so I can get it out of the way. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. I'm afraid, should I open it with my old Excel or with the new Excel? <laughs> Not terrible. Open with, okay, I'll, I'll open it with the new one, I guess. Um, see what happens. Yeah, mind you, you can do a lot of stuff with Excel too, but I still feel even in this you know, newer version that it's very, um, it's just a lot of stuff. Um, anyway, here I just took, yeah, this is just the mortality per 100K in, I forget when, but um, let's see if we can do a bar with this. If you select, see, I don't know Excel very well, but let me just try selecting these two columns, which is the year. This is a different data set, by the way. Um, so let me see if I can. So I've got year and mortality throughout the United States since 1930 to now. And I did a, a line earlier. So insert chart right here. And these are nice little icons. So let's see, let's do a line. And it did another line. Look what it did. Why does it do this? <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't want to put down Excel. But why am I getting a line for the years and a line? So it's not very good. So actually, what I want probably is just to plot just this column, just the data, right? Let's see what happens with that. Um, so insert chart right here. Let's do line again. Now that's much better. The only trouble with it is, and I'm sure there's a way, but, and I'm sure you can figure it out. The only trouble is that it doesn't automatically give me the years for what I want the years, right? Which is on the, on the X axis. It just gives me numbers. And I know that you can right click and do, uh, let's see, select data. And here, in theory, for white values, I can start putting in some information. I'm not going to do it now, but this is where you have to now select what you want to show there. So it's just a little bit, it's just a little bit. If I put, let's see if I just type something, probably it's going to give me an error because it's a formula. Yeah, OK. So anyway, you have to put stuff there to visualize the names. Um, so yeah, I, you can do a lot with it. I just don't try very much because it's, um, it's not very intuitive for me. Um, let me see if I have another file in Excel so I don't. Oh yeah. Let's try also this other one called uh, LCA Arc. Yeah, all right. 
this is actually the data that I did for that I looked at for that uh, example where I transformed the the pie into uh, bars. Um, and this is not bad. I mean, I think let's just see. Let's try. These actually see. Here's a question I have. So for the line, it gave me a line, but it didn't put the years. So now I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm putting the topic, and I'm doing percent for those different topics. And I'm going to insert another line, because obviously a line wouldn't make sense. I'm going to insert bars. And so my question is, why does it do it for bars? Why does it put the labels for bars and doesn't put the labels for the years? There must be a reason, but um, that's the kind of thing why it's like, well, I should be more intuitive. You did? How did you do it? By starting at the very top cell, grabbing the whole thing. The whole thing? Both, both columns. Oh, okay. So let's see. Here, both columns from the top cell? I thought I did. Or do you need to select it like that? Well, no, no. I, no? Top cell and then. Yeah, just, a, just everything, right? Yeah. Yeah, so I grab that and then I do insert, insert. line. Well, I just recommend it. Oh, what is recommended? Oh, okay. Here we go. Oh. Recommended. <laughs> you need a recommendation. <laughs> you, you have to admit it's a little odd, right? I mean, it's okay. Fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. I, no, okay, great. I learned that. It's fantastic. So actually, if you expand, it will put the numbers, it will fit the numbers. Um, diagonally to make them all fit, so which is nice. Thank you. <laughs> OK, so yeah, actually, you can do. I guess that's the trick. That's just got to recommend. OK. Uh, let's see what happens with the other one. OK, we're getting close. But I want to show you how to clean uh, Excel, too. All right. Well, that's pretty good. So I'm just going to try to print uh, one thing and then try to clean it up in Illustrator real quick. Um, one thing you can do in Illustrator is actually put the grid lines on top and make them white. So you actually get rid of the green lines. Let me, let me see if I can do this real quick. If I try to print, no, uh, no that's not the one I want. I want this one. So in this case, I'm just, I'm just printing and I'm saving it as a PDF. Um, and then I'm going to, because a PDF is Adobe, I can open it with Illustrator. Uh, uh, Illustrator. Anastasia, are we good to do yeah. 10 more minutes? No. And then we do maybe five minutes for the, yeah. for the survey? OK. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I'm just opening it in Illustrator. And by the way, if you know Illustrator a little bit, there is one command, which is Command Y, which visualizes just, it's like a wireframe mode. Um, and uh, that's really useful. It's uh, View Preview, I think. Yeah, View Preview, View Outline. So that, that tells me there's a lot of garbage I don't want, right? So I think what I'll do is, ah, I wish it was, I wish it were grouped, but it's not. <laughs> Help. <laughs> okay. Uh, how am I going to get out of there? It's going to be tricky, very tricky. Whoa. I think I lucked out. Hey, I did. Anyway, this is just a very, very simple thing. Well, I don't have the right labels that I really needed, but here's what you can do with the lines. Um, if you select one, let's say it's grouped, right, object. Um, and we make them, no, that's something else. Yeah, OK, that was something else. So I'm selecting the line, and it's gray, and I'm going to select the same stroke color. And now I'm going to put it above it. I'm going to trans uh, range bring to front. And now they should be on top. No, they're not. <laughs> uh, let's see, select, same um, 
Stroke color. I'm going to group it. Okay, make a group. Okay. Uh, I'm going to exit and then I'm going to select all and paste on top by doing paste in front. And now they're in front. But uh, let's see. Yeah, now they're grouped. Um, what you can do is actually you can make them white uh, somewhere here. If I make them white, what's nice is I'm left with the, with the tick marks just on the bars. And this is actually a very neat way. Now, maybe there's too many tick marks now, but, um, and I can make it a little thinner maybe. Um, so I'll just make it a little, let's see, stroke. Window stroke. Yeah, it's too thick. It's one point. I'm going to make them 0.25. Maybe that's too little. Okay, 0.5. Anyway, this is nice because it actually cleans up the graph in a, in, in a nice way, and you don't need grid lines anymore. In other words, they're there, but they kind of disappear. So that's one little trick in Illustrator. Um, okay. Uh, I'm not going to save. So now we'll do a little bit of Tableau which is really fun. <laughs> um, don't save. I mean, Tableau is a little bit like using Photoshop to do photography. I mean, you can do anything you want, but it's nice if you knew a little bit about photography. Of course, nobody does anymore because there's, you have phones instead of a real camera and real film in a real dark room. But there is something nice about being in control, like writing your own code. Um, so let's see, Tableau. Hmm. Yeah, OK. Uh, I'm going to open the Tableau file. Just double click on it. It should, should open. Uh, and I'm learning it. So if I don't quite hit everything. Uh-oh, that's not good. Um, no, okay, I'm just, um, yeah, never mind. If, if you get an error like this, just open Tableau and actually let me quit. And I'm just gonna open Tableau fresh. The, when I moved the files around, the connections to the data sets got messed up. So just open fresh and you should get this window. We back to Earth. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sort of. I can see, sort of. Uh, um, okay. Uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, let's see. Let's see. All right. So when you open, you can say here, you can grab a text file, basically connect to a file. So again, we're going to do a text file just because that's the simplest. Um, and I'm going to grab the same data set. So let's find it. Let's see. Download desktop. Um, uh, oh, okay. I put a copy of it in the in the Tableau folder as well, but it's the same one. Okay, and uh, so Tableau does something. So here, here you have the same file. Now down below here, you can say new spread, new uh, worksheet, which is really a new graph, right? A new plot. So down below, and you can give it a name. So uh, cancer test, and it shows up here. And here, how Tableau works, it's really drag and drop. And if I can't make it work, there is actually a video that I recorded when I was able to make it work. And it's in uh, under movie, somewhere there in the folder structure. Um, so. Please, you know, you're welcome to copy all the files. Well, they're in iLearn, so you can get them later. So anyway, let's see if it works. Uh, so basically, I have all my columns here. They're called measures, and some things are called dimensions, which I'm guessing has to do with geodata and other things like that. So what I can try to do is, let's see. Remember, we were trying to, let's plot the simpler things, which was mortality and, and, and um, incidents for the states overall. Okay, so these two. Now, this is cool about Tableau. If you write up here where it says show me, it's kind of like recommended in Excel, basically, <laughs> <laughs> which is great, right? 
Uh, now, sometimes recommended is not perfect, but it shows me. So here, it actually immediately tells you with this data set, what should I do? And I want a scatter plot. So I go to scatter plot right there, and it says try zero dimensions and two or four measures. Well, you'll see that actually you putting a dimension is actually okay, but let's try first the, the measures, okay? So the measures, if you remember, were the ratio and the mortality, right? I mean, the inc incidence and mortality. And we wanted one on the X and one on the Y. And you see how it is columns and rows here? So I'm guessing, OK, well, maybe, maybe by rows they mean Y, X. So let's try that. Let's put incidence in rows. So just simply grab it, OK? So just grab incidence, the first, uh, basically both, black and white mortality ratio and and black and white incidence ratio. Now, maybe I want the incidence. Oh, never mind. I actually want it. Yeah, incidence there and mortality under columns. And what's happening? Nothing. Hmm, that's not so good. I'm not sure what's happening, but here's the other thing you can do. I'm going to do, I'm going to take the state. And I'm going to try to drop it into one of these marks. Let's see if we try size. Again, it's a little voodoo, but bingo. <laughs> OK, that's great. So, um, so the question is, what is it plotting? It's plotting population, right? Remember the earlier uh, plot? It's plotting population. Let's figure out if it's really pl plotting population. Um, I mean, meaning the size of the circle. So let's take the population column here. Okay, can you all? And let's drop that into the label right here. Okay. So I take the population. No, I'm sorry, not population, state. What am I doing? State, state. Let's take the state names and put them into the label. Ah, that's good. So now, um, so here's the thing. Now, I don't really want the, the, the size of the population because I don't care, right? So what I did <laughs> in my data set, which is where I can remember where it is, but um, this was a little hack that I did. But I made a column where all the states are the same size. I can't, I can't remember now to go back to the, to the source here. Let's see. Yeah, here. So I made a column for myself, and I called it symbol hack, and I just gave it a value of 10. Uh, and I think with that, now I can do a little trick. And for the size, instead of plotting the population, which I think, let's click on it. Let's see if it's really doing it. If I double click, wait. Uh, I can't. I was hoping to get inside that size, but I can't. So I'm going to take the column that says symbol hack, which is a value of 10. And I'm just going to, because now it kind of. Actually, if you hover your cursor, the little scale comes up. Here? The size plot. Mm -hmm. I got the little. It's like uh, little yeah, I'm not getting it for some reason. Anyway, let, let me just pull this symbol hack, which is a value of 10. And I'm going to bring it to symbol. And that's great. That's really what I want, right? So this was a little run around. So for some reason, when we first put um, state in, it just put that dot there. But then when we put, what did we do again? I forget. We, um, well, it gives us whatever it gives. I guess we can come back. Let's see. We can go back this way and just toggle with the errors, OK? We just did that, and it gives us this. And then we went forward, and we dropped in state for size. And that was good. And then we put the labels by pulling the state name into the label. And then we looked at the data set. I didn't want the different sizes, so I pulled my fake number 10 column into the size, and I got that. And now what's nice is you can, in fact, um, Right here? Actually, no, right here. 
This is really nice because you can actually change. They're too big, right? I want to make them a little smaller. So I'm going to make the dots really small because I really want to see everything. And then for the label, I'm going to do the, I'm also going to make the type really small. Somewhere here, I'm going to type five point. Um, And now I start getting all the states. And anyway, what, what's not great about this graph is that it's in the corner there. So I'm sure there is a way to you know, zoom in. Um, all right, I'm just going to show one last little thing. Uh, the cars tableau. Uh, let's see. Oh, never mind, same problem. Uh, I'm just going to close this one, don't save, uh, just because I think tree maps are like super, super cool. Uh, we're going to do one quickly in Tableau. And that's the car sales, which was that example that I had in the slides. Um, and let's see, text file again. Um, go to Tableau. Grab the cars, car, sales cars, open. OK, and just to show you how tree maps work, the trick with tree maps is that you want to have, like, it's like uh, dolls inside one another. It's like buckets. And so the way to set up your data is you simply have to have a column that has, in this case, what's a truck and what's a car. That's it. You have models of you know, four-wheel vehicles. We have how much the sales changed from one year to the next, and how many they sold. And then the last column is, OK, is it a truck or is it a car? And that's it's going to make the two pies. It's going to split the pie. So let's do a new worksheet, and we're going to call it car sales cancel. You can just type here at the bottom, car sales. So again, if you look at show me and you look at, this is the symbol for tree map right there. So if you look at that, it will say recommend me, what should I do for tree map? And it says one or more dimensions, one measure. So let's try that. I'm gonna take the category. I'm gonna drop the category and I'm gonna just, just I have no idea where it's gonna go, but let's see, and the model. And I'm going to try the units sold. Let's see what happens. It gives me a bar chart, but notice how a lot of other possibilities are highlighted. So if I click on, nice. Now, this is too easy. <laughs> it's beautiful, um, but it's really easy. So did you see what I did? Remember? I looked at that, it suggested what I should do, and it says one or more dimensions, and I took the category, which is, again, is it a car or is it a truck? And I took the model, and I put them in this row. Then I put the, the how many they sold, I put it in that row. It gave me a bar, but then I saw, oh, I can maybe do a, 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 a tree map, and it did. So do you see how the, the split is, that's the split right there. So these are all trucks and these are all cars. And uh, if you, the label now shows, let's see, edit colors. <coughs> we can put the change, the percentage change into, let's see here, yeah. And we can also customize the label and say instead of a continuous, which is really, really bad, by the way, that never put a continuous lab, uh, legend like that. Make it, make it into like groups like this, okay? Um, and let's just say the middle, yeah. We can change where it starts and where it ends. It doesn't exactly duplicate what the original was, but, um, but it's pretty good, okay? So the, it just tells you this did better year over year and the others did not so well. But you see, uh, they're all the same. I almost liked it better before. Yeah, that's actually better. Okay, I think we did a lot. Thank you so much for like hanging in there. Um, do you have any questions? Anything? I, 
since you're on iLearn, I, I might put more stuff in iLearn. I have a website for my class, my information design class, and I'll probably just add more like tutorials and stuff like that to this website. So if you want to like come back and, yeah, I will. Yeah, what, did you have a question? The Tableau, is that a proprietary? It's free. Well, it's cost a lot of money, but you can get a student license for a year. Okay. Yeah, so that's, that's really good, yeah. Any other questions? Um, I, I should just tell you, I have these books here, if you're curious, uh, if you want to look at it. And I can also, yeah, hang out if you have more questions after we, we do the survey. Uh, in today's, in last Sunday, New York Times, there's a really great story about women in computing and programming. You all know that the first programmer was a woman, right? Right? Do you know that? Does, does anyone know who that was? Hmm? Who? Lovelace. Ada Lovelace, otherwise famously, unfortunately, only because she was the daughter of Lord Byron, but she's very important as a, as a, as a programmer. She basically proved that this other guy who was uh, pr uh, designing this machine uh, could work, essentially. Yeah, she, she really wrote, she wrote them under a pseudonym, but anyway, that's a great article. Thank you again. Thanks for coming. <laughs>